Here I am to worship. There is freedom. There is joy. There is awe and wonder and fulfillment. There is healing and restoration. There is excitement and love and peace and comfort. There is understanding and wisdom and liberty in God. As we continue in unprecedented times, we continue to live with masks and social distancing and the fear of getting COVID-19 or Delta variant, or I understand there's another variant. We hear and see the violence at seemingly higher than normal levels. People are driving erratically, acting irrationally, tired, frustrated, irritated, short-tempered, impatient. Some of us are not feeling well or people very close to us are not well, physically, mentally, nor emotionally. These unprecedented times have taken a toll on each of us and all of us in one way or another, whether we realize it or not. And they're not over. Yet there is freedom. And there is joy, there is awe and wonder and fulfillment, there is healing and restoration, there is excitement and love and peace and comfort, there is understanding and wisdom and liberty in God. We serve a true and living God and we can experience the fullness of God when we remove all barriers and we are free to say, here I am to worship. I learned through experience some time ago that when I feel overwhelmed, upset, sad, confused, irritated, when I'm faced with a difficulty that I can't fix, that if I begin to worship God, my countenance and my outlook and my attitude change for the better. And they change because to worship God is to acknowledge that God's power is far greater than mine. To worship God is to acknowledge that God's wisdom is far wiser than mine. To worship God is to acknowledge God's provision, God's protection, God's plan, even for my life. To worship God is to acknowledge that God is. And when you know God is, you can have hope. That's what I believe the psalmist is telling us today. Psalm 84 is a wonderful psalm that tells of the blessings for those who worship the living God. Hear the psalmist. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord of heavenly forces. And can I say, Brother Tim, you read that text with power and anointing. God bless you. Thank you. The psalmist says, my very being longs, yearns for the Lord's courtyards. My heart and my body will rejoice out loud to the living God. The psalmist is excited about the thought and yearning for the opportunity to go to God's dwelling place. He's on a pilgrimage to God's dwelling place. He longs to be even in the courtyards. And his heart and his body, he says, will rejoice out loud when he's in the presence of the living God. Where is this dwelling place? 
It's possible that the psalmist was referring to the temple in Jerusalem. It's possible. Just as we love this sanctuary, the amazing woodwork, the Tiffany windows, the beautiful piano and pipe organ, the psalmist loves the temple and the courtyards, but is brick and mortar the only place God dwells? I'm grateful for those who have remained on Zoom or join us on Facebook for you demonstrate the faith that God is not only present in brick and mortar. For if the pandemic taught us anything about worship, it taught us that we can come into the presence of God outside of the physical edifice. Amen? Amen. It taught us that we can come into the presence of God wherever we are. And the reality is that it was not the edifice that excited the psalmist's soul. The end of verse 2 tells us that his heart and his body will rejoice out loud to the living God. He's anticipating the presence of God. It is the presence of God that gives him joy. The presence of God that makes the dwelling place so lovely. The presence and the evidence of a living God that makes him rejoice out loud. It's his remembrance of times when God manifested God's self as a living God. Has God ever manifested God's presence to you such that you knew you served and worshiped a living God? A time and a place where God's presence was palpable? That's what the psalmist is talking about. And he yearns to experience God in this way again and again. The psalmist helps us as he continues. Verse three, he says, yes, the sparrow too has found a home there. The swallow has found herself a nest where she can lay her young beside your altars. Lord of heavenly forces, my king, my God, there are birds in God's dwelling place. The psalmist is, in essence, Brother Tim, bird watching. Thank you, Tim, for taking us bird watching. The psalmist sees sparrows and swallows, and just a little research tells me that these two types of birds are so very different. Yet they both have a place in the presence of God. You've heard it said that birds of a feather flock together. Well, the psalmist says in God's dwelling place, the birds are different. And that just brought to mind our mission statement and made me excited about it all over again. Listen to the words which you constructed to celebrate God's diversity among us through inclusive, open, and affirming Christian fellowship and service to welcome and honor each person through all stages of life. You said that. Amen? Amen? Amen. And to pursue God's justice in the world with the promise of joy, liberation, and love. That we have named that difference is welcome is exciting, that diversity is welcome and is possible in God's house, and that by welcoming difference and pursuing God's justice in the world together, there is a promise of joy and liberation and love that is so exciting to me. As we live this out and we watch how God makes this possible, we can say like the psalmist, yes, the sparrow and the swallow have found a home. And that this is indeed God's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. The psalmist not only acknowledges that embracing difference is possible in God's dwelling place, but he also brings the love of nature into the conversation. There's something about the love of nature that puts life's stress at ease. 
We are in fact talking about God's dwelling place. And when you see the wonders of God's creation, when you see the waters of the lake and the beautiful sky and the trees and the flowers and even the bees, even the snow falling from the sky, I hope it does for you what it does for the psalmist. It evokes joy to know that we serve a God who did all that. Next time you're outside, look at God's creation. Don't do it just because I said so. Do it because Jesus actually says so in Matthew 6. 26 and 27, Jesus said, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valued than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to the span of your life? Why do you worry, Jesus says, about clothing? Consider, he tells us to look again, the lilies of the field. How they grow and they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God, but if God, and since God, Clothes the grass of the field which is alive today and tomorrow thrown into the oven. Will God not much more clothe you? Jesus not only tells us to look at nature, but to learn about God from looking at nature. If you haven't been doing so lately due to the pandemic sheltered in place, I encourage you to spend some time and learn about God through nature. Open your eyes and see the wonder of God. Realize that you are in the presence of God. Breathe deeply and receive new hope. I was walking on the lakefront one day right at Promontory Point. Some of you may have seen this. I was on Facebook Live. And I was talking about just the wonder of creation. Look at the lake and look at the flowers and the trees. I said, this is God's abundance. I had my phone now showing the people on Facebook Live God's abundance. Just look, look at God's abundance. It doesn't matter who you are. You have access to this abundance. You can be rich with what God has created. And just as I said that, a man bent down and found some money on the ground and picked it up and went off happy. And I said, Lord, you know, you, you can give an illustration. In that moment, talking about the abundance of God, God says, my, my minister, you're on the right track. Keep going. There is abundance in God. The psalmist is watching not only birds, the psalmist is also people watching. Who, who likes the people watch? Anybody? You're right in line with the psalmist. Listen to what the psalmist says in verse four. He says, those who live in your house are truly happy. They praise you constantly. And as Tim said, say la. Those who put their strength in you, he's watching them. The psalmist says are truly happy. Pilgrimages in their hearts. As they pass through the Baca Valley, they make it a spring of water. Yes, the early rain covers it with blessings. They go from strength to strength until they see the supreme God in Zion. The psalmist is watching people who worship and praise God. And he notices that there is something different about them. He notices that they are what he calls truly happy. He, he seems to distinguish from just being happy. He calls them truly happy. This is what we may call joy that the world didn't give and the world can't take it away. You see, it's not that they don't have problems or don't see trouble. Verse 6 says, as they pass through the Baca Valley, scholars identified this as the Valley of Tears. 
Reminds me of Psalm 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it does not mean that they don't see any danger or see any problems. They indeed go through dark valleys. The psalmist says these people he's watching, they pass through the valley of tears and they seem to leave it better than they found it. They make it, he says, a spring of water. He's watching these people who worship and praise God, and he notices that they don't get weak from the challenges they face, but they go from strength to strength because they have put their strength in God. Sounds familiar to my ear. It brought me to the prophet Isaiah, who has the same encouragement. Isaiah 40 and 30 says, you will become tired and weary. Young men will certainly stumble, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. It doesn't say they'll always be strong, but it'll, they'll go from strength to strength, as the psalmist says. They will mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let me encourage somebody today. I know we're in difficult days, but put your hope in the Lord. I know we're tired of this pandemic, but put your hope in the Lord. The psalmist has noted and the prophet has promised that when we put our hope in God, we will go from strength to strength. God will give you strength to keep on going. God will give you the strength to pass through the Baca Valley. God can and God will. How do I know? Because God did it for me. How do I know? Because God did it for my ancestors. So whatever it is you're going through, Put your hope in God. How do you put your hope in God? I'm glad you asked. Pray it out. Lord, I'm tired, but I have faith that you will see me through. You can even cry it out, or as the commercial used to say, shout it out. I need your strength, oh God. I need your mercy, oh God. Lord, I need your wisdom. Lord, I need you. And when you put your hope in the living God, the psalmist says he's seen people go from strength to strength until they see the supreme God in Zion. The psalmist knows and encourages us that those who put their hope in God will grow in strength until they see the Lord and God can indeed be seen. The psalmist changes then in the next verse. It's one of the things I love about the psalms. They shift from ex exhortation to prayer. And he shifts to a prayer. Verse 8, he says, Lord God of heavenly forces, hear my prayer. Listen closely. Jacob's God, Selah. Did you catch the mood change? What's that all about? The clue is in the words, Jacob's God. He's gone from the Lord of heavenly forces to, to refer to God now as part of his prayer for himself as Jacob's God. Why? Well, to answer this question, we need to know a little bit about Jacob. Jacob was the second born twin of Isaac and Rebekah. Jacob was stingy with his stew. And greedy with his birthright, greedy for the birthright of his brother. Jacob was a trickster and tricked his own father, receiving the blessing meant for Esau. In essence, Jacob was a trip. <laughs> then came the day when Jacob wrestled with God. And as a result of the wrestling, Jacob the trickster became Israel, the great ancestor of the people of Israel. Jacob's life was blessed despite tradition and despite his own flaws. So when the psalmist says, hear my prayer, Jacob's God, he's saying, hear my prayer even though I'm flawed. Hear my prayer even though I have not done everything right. Hear my prayer, as a matter of fact, I have done wrong. But hear my prayer anyway, God, like you heard the prayer of my ancestor, Jacob, and bless me anyway. 
The psalmist gets authentic with God and God knows us anyway, or some say anyhow. But there's something about when we lay it bare before God, because it also causes us to be honest with ourselves. I haven't done everything right, God, but bless me anyway. As a matter of fact, I've done some wrong, but I need you, God, to hear my prayer anyway. Jacob's God, hear my prayer. And if you're burdened down by some wrong you have done, I encourage you to do like the psalmist says and pray for yourself. Even if you don't think you've done wrong, still pray for yourself. It's okay to pray for yourself. It's okay to admit wrongdoing. It's okay to admit you're struggling. You're talking to God and God already knows. First Peter 5 and 6 says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. And as I prepare to close, the psalmist ends his song and his prayer, his reflections on people watching and bird watching and his love of being in God's presence by saying, better is a single day in your courtyard than a thousand days anywhere else. I would prefer to stand outside the entrance of my God's house than to live comfortably in the tents of wickedness. Let this word, the psalm, encourage you to keep on worshiping God. For in these days we are living in, people are walking away from the church. There are churches that are wondering that when they open their doors, will the people come? And the bigger the church, the bigger the fear. People are wondering if church will ever be the same again. So many are still closed. People are finding something else to do on Sundays. But I admonish you, like the psalmist, keep on worshiping God. I encourage you to keep fellowshipping with the people of God. I admonish you to enjoy God's creation. Maybe we ought to worship outside sometime soon. Keep enjoying this dwelling place, yes, but enjoy the dwelling place of God's nature. Keep being in awe of all that God created. As we continue in the days ahead, not knowing what this pandemic will bring next, I encourage you to put your hope in God. I encourage you to remember the days when you have felt God's presence and ask God to manifest God's self to you again. Remember the days when you felt the joy of the Lord and ask God to restore the joy of your salvation. I'm going to repeat that. Remember the days when you have felt the joy of the Lord and ask the Lord to restore the joy of your salvation. Remember the days when you felt the blessings of God and ask God to bless you again. It was Jacob, as a matter of fact, who said, I won't let you go, God, until you bless me. If you're feeling spiritually dry, ask God to renew your spirit. If you're feeling forgotten, say to God, remember me. If you're feeling tired or frustrated, ask God to renew a right spirit within you. And what I know for sure is that we serve a God who answers prayer. Amen? Amen. We serve a God who can and will do it. Amen? Amen? For the psalmist says the Lord is a sun and a shield. If God is favor and glory, the Lord gives, does not withhold good things to those who walk with integrity. Lord of heavenly forces. Those who trust in you are truly happy, so please hear and join in to the words again as I ask Kiana to sing again, here I am to worship. If you're committed to continuing to worship God, no matter what, here I am to worship. If you need God, say, here I am, I've come to worship. The psalmist has told me that that, that is the way for me to get out of this bondage that I'm in, here I am to worship. Yeah. If you want God to manifest God's self, say, 
As Kiana and Pastor Sarah sing with the wonderful accompaniment of Greg, let us rise and let us just enjoy the music. If you don't know the words, let it go down into your spirit and say, God, here I am. Just say, here I am. If you don't know any other words, just say, here I am. Here I am to worship. God bless you. together 